that view. What do you think of the case? A lot of interest for me. No dead spots, you know what I mean? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Witnesses can make mistakes.
testing one two three four Are you shushing me? <laughs> Hi, everybody. And they said it couldn't happen, but here we are. I'm very, very happy, more than you can imagine, to welcome you here today for our drama production of 12 Angry Men. Guys have worked so hard, and we have lots of lots of extra help from all over Seton Hall Prep to bring this production to you today. Very happy to see you here live, and very happy that we have so many friends of ours who will be streaming this live with us today. So sit back, forget about the pandemic, and enjoy 12 Angry Men. Thank you. the court's explanation of the legal aspects of this case. And now, gentlemen of the jury, I come to my final instructions to you. Murder in the first degree, premeditated homicide, is the most serious case tried in our criminal courts. You have listened to the testimonies, and you've had the law read as it applies to this case. And now, gentlemen, it is your turn to discern the facts from the fancy. One man is dead. The life of another is in your hands. I urge you to deliberate honestly and thoughtfully. If you find there to be reasonable doubt, then you must bring me a verdict of not guilty. If, however, you find there to be no reasonable doubt, then you must, in good conscience, bring me a verdict of guilty. However you decide, your verdict must be unanimous. In the event you find the accused guilty, the court will not entertain a recommendation for mercy. The death sentence is mandatory in this case. I do not envy you, gentlemen. You are tasked with a grave responsibility. You have my thanks. All right, gentlemen, let's move it along here. No, thanks. You know, I rung the Weather Bureau up. 
This is supposed to be the hottest day of the year. You think at least they'd air condition the place. I almost dropped dead in court. All right, gentlemen, that's everyone accounted for. I'll be right outside the store, so if you need anything, just go ahead and knock. Hmm. I never knew they locked the door. <laughs> sure they locked the door. What do you think? I don't know, it just never occurred to me. Hey, what's that for? Well, I figured we might want to vote by ballots. Huh. Great idea. Hey, maybe we could get him elected senator. <laughs> How'd you like it? I don't know. It was pretty interesting. Yeah? I was falling asleep. Well, I've never been on a jury before. Really? I've sat on plenty of juries. It always amazes me the way these lawyers can talk and talk, even when the case is obvious as this one. I mean, have you ever heard so much talk about nothing? I guess they're entitled. Oh, sure they are. Everybody deserves a fair trial. That's the system. Listen, I'm the last one to say anything against it, but sometimes I think we'd be better off if we took these tough kids and slapped them down before they could cause any trouble. Save us a lot of time and money, you know? Hey, Mr. Foreman, how about we get this started? Yeah, let's get this over with. I'm sure we've all probably got things to do. Well, I was figuring we'd take a five-minute break. I mean, the old man's in the bathroom. Hey, uh, are we going to sit in order? I don't know. Hmm. Not a bad view. What'd you think of the case? It had a lot of interest for me. No dead spots, you know what I mean? I'll say, we were lucky to get a murder case. I figured we'd have burglary, assault, something like that. Those can be the dullest. <sighs> say, isn't that the Warworth building over there? That's right. Funny, I've lived here all my life, but I've never once been in it. Goddamn waste of time. I mean, yeah, could you imagine sitting here for three days just for this? And what about that business with the knife? I mean, trying to get 12 grown men to believe that bullshit? Well, look, I guess you gotta expect that sort of a thing. You know what we're dealing with here. Ah, uh, I guess so. Hey, let's see if we can't get this fan going in here. Great. Fan doesn't even work. Someone write a letter to the mayor. Dear Stingy. Let me take a look at it. It doesn't work. I didn't get a chance to look at the newspapers today. Anything new going on? I was just wondering how the market closed. <laughs> I wouldn't know. You on the exchange or something? I'm a broker. Really? Mm -hmm. I run a messenger service, the beck and call company. Name is my wife's idea. I employ 37 people, started with nothing. Hey, Mr. Foreman, could we get started? All right, gentlemen, let's take seats. Better be fast. Jeez, got tickets to the baseball game tonight. Yankees versus Cleveland. They got this new kid pitching, Majalewski. He's a real bull, this kid, you know? Shoom! A real jug handle, huh? Shoom! Okay, I can tell you're a real bull fan. Um, Mr. Foreman, where'd you like us to sit? Well, I was thinking we ought to sit in order by jury numbers, two, three, four, and so on, if that's okay with you gentlemen. What's the Fine difference? I think it's reasonable to coin the number. Let it be. What was your impression as a prosecuting attorney? I beg pardon? I mean, it was real sharp the way he handled his points, one by one, logical sequence. Takes a good brain to do that. I was impressed. Yes, he did an expert job. I mean, he had a lot of drive, too. Real drive. All right, let's get this show on the road. How about sitting down? Gentleman at the window, how about sitting down? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. It's uh, pretty tough to figure, isn't it? Kid kills his father? I mean, bing, just like that. Well, if you analyze the figures. Oh, oh, what figures? It's those people. I'm telling you, they let those kids run wild up there. Well, maybe it serves them right, know what I mean? Are hey, you a Yankees fan? No, Milwaukee. <laughs> Milwaukee. It's like being hit on the head with a crowbar once a day. Milwaukee, tell me, who do they got besides great groundskeepers? Would like to get started? I'm sorry. <laughs> Milwaukee. <clears throat> All right. Now, you gentlemen can handle this any way you want to. I mean, I'm not going to have any rules. We could discuss first and then vote. That's one way. Or we could just vote right now and see how we stand. 
Well, that's all I have to say. I think it's customary to take a preliminary vote. Yeah, let's vote. Who knows, maybe we could all go home. It's up to you. Just let's remember we've got a first degree murder charge here. We go guilty, we send the accused to the electric chair. That is mandatory. I think we all know that. Come on, let's vote. Yeah, let's see who's where. Anybody does not want to vote? Okay. This has to be a 12 to nothing vote. Either way, that is the law. Okay, are you ready? All those voting guilty, raise your hands. 9, 10, 11, okay, that is 11 for guilty, not guilty. <laughs> one, right, okay. 11 to 1, guilty, now we know where we are. Boy, oh boy, there's always one. All right, so what do we do now? Well, I guess we talk. Boy, oh boy. Look, do you really think he's innocent? I don't know. I mean, come on, let's be reasonable. You sat in court and heard the same things we did. The man's a dangerous killer, you can see it. The man? He's 16 years old. That's old enough. He knifed his own father, four inches into the chest. It's pretty obvious. I mean, I was convinced from the first day. Who wasn't? Look, I really think this is one of those open and shut things. They proved it about a dozen different ways. Would you like me to list them for you? No. Then what do you want? Nothing. I, I just want to talk. <laughs> What's there to talk about? Eleven of us in here think he's guilty. No one had to think about it twice except you. I want to ask you something. Do you believe his story? I don't know whether I believe it. Maybe I don't. So what'd you vote not guilty for? There were 11 votes for guilty in here. It's, it's not easy for me to raise my hand and send a boy off to die without talking about it first. Who said it was easy for me? No one. What, just because I raised my hand quickly? Look, honestly, I think the boy's guilty, pal. You couldn't change my mind if you talked for 100 years. I'm not, I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm just saying we're talking about somebody's life here. We can't decide in five minutes. Suppose we're wrong. <laughs> Suppose we're wrong? Suppose we're wrong. Suppose this whole building fell on my head. You could suppose anything. That's right. Honestly, what's the difference then? We all think he's guilty. What if it takes five minutes? So what? Let's take an hour. The, the ball game doesn't start till eight o'clock. All right, Slugger. Be my guest. Uh, well, who's got something to say? How about you? Not me. I'm only to put in an hour. Great. So I heard this pretty good story last night. This woman comes running into the That's doctor's office. That's not what we're sitting here for. Uh, all right, then you tell me what are we sitting here for? I don't know, maybe for no reason. Look, it's just, this boy, he's been kicked around his whole life. Um, like living in a slum, his, his mother dead since he was nine. He spent a year and a half in an orphanage because his father was serving jail time for forgery. That's not a good head start. He's had a pretty terrible 16 years. I think maybe we, we owe him a few words, that's all. Listen, I don't mind being the one to tell you this, mister, but uh, we don't owe him a thing. He got a fair trial, didn't he? What do you think the trial cost? He's lucky he even got it, know what I mean? Look, we're all grown-ups in here, and we heard the facts, didn't we? Now <laughs> you're not gonna sit up here and tell us we're supposed to believe that kid, knowing what he is. Listen, I've lived among them my whole life. You can't believe a word they say. I mean, they're born liars. You know, it's suddenly starting to occur to me that you must be an ignorant man. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> What's he talking about? Do you think you have a monopoly on the truth? What are you making a federal case out of this for? <laughs> How do you like this guy? I think some things should be pointed out to this gentleman. All right, it's not Sunday. We don't need a sermon in here. Monopoly. For Christ's sakes. Gentlemen, if we're going to discuss this case, let's stick to the facts. Right, we have a job to do. Let's do it. Maybe if the gentleman who is disagreeing down there could tell us why, you know, tell us what he thinks, we could show him where he's probably mixed up. What are you doing? Hmm? Oh, it's a product I work for at the ad agency. Rice Pops, the breakfast with the built-in bounce. I wrote that one. It's very catchy. You don't mind? I'm sorry. I have a habit of doodling. It keeps me thinking clearly. We're trying to get some place here. You know, we can sit here forever. Well, look, maybe this is an idea. It seems to me that it's up to us to convince that gentleman over there that we're right and he's wrong. So maybe if we each took a minute or two, I mean, just a quick idea. No, I think it's a good one. Uh, supposing we go once around the table in order of drawing numbers? Anything. Let's just start it off. Okay. That means you're first. Well, uh, I don't know. I just think he's guilty. I thought it was obvious from the word go. I mean, nobody proved it otherwise. Nobody has to prove it otherwise. The burden of proof is on the prosecution. The defense doesn't have to open his mouth. That's in the Constitution. You've heard of it. Well, sure, I've heard of it. I know what it is. What I'm trying to say is the boy's guilty. I mean, somebody saw him All do right, it. look, here's what I think. I'm not talking personal feelings here. I'm talking facts. Number one, let's take the old man who lived on the second floor of the apartment, right underneath where the murder took place. 
at about uh, 10 minutes after 12. He said he heard loud noises coming from the apartment upstairs. He said it sounded like a fight. Then he heard the boy yell out, I'm going to kill you. A split second later, he heard a body fall. So he ran to the door of his apartment and saw the boy running down the stairs and out of the house. Then he called the police. They found the father with a knife in his chest. And the coroner fixed time of death around midnight. Yeah. Right. I mean, these are the facts. You cannot refute facts. This boy is guilty. Look, I'm as sentimental as the next guy. I know he's only 16. Still got to pay for what he did. I'm with you, Pop. It was obvious to me anyway that the boy's entire story was flimsy. He claimed he was at the movies during the time of the killing. And yet one hour later, he couldn't remember what films he saw or who played in them. Mm. That's right. Did you all hear that? That's absolutely right. No one saw him going into or out of the theater. Listen, what about that woman across the street? I mean, if her testimony don't prove it, then nothing does. That's right. She was the one who actually saw the killing take right, let's, place. Let's, let's go in order here. Oh, just a minute. I mean, here's a woman. Here's a woman who's lying in bed and can't sleep. I mean, she's dying with the heat, you know what I mean? Anyways, she looks out her window, and right across the street, she sees the kid stick the knife into his father. The time is 12.10 on the nose. Everything fits. Look, she's known this kid his whole life. His window is right opposite hers, across the L tracks, and she swore she saw him do it. Through the windows of a passing elevated train. Right. This L train had no passengers on it. It was just being moved downtown. The lights are out, remember? And they proved in court that at night, you could look through the windows of a passing L train when the lights are out and still see what's happening on the other side. I mean, they proved this. Could I ask you a question? Sure. You don't believe the boy. How come you believe the woman? She's one of them, too, isn't she? Oh, oh, oh you're a pretty smart fellow, aren't you? Hey, let's take it easy. No, no what's she so wise about? I'm telling you. All right, you. come on, sit down. What are you letting him get you all upset for? <sighs> Calm down now. Let's try to keep peaceful in here. Um, now, whose turn is it? How about you? Me? Um, I'll pass it. Ah, that's your privilege. How about the next gentleman? Uh, well, I don't know. I started to be convinced, well, very early on in the case. Well, I was looking for the motive. That's very important. If there's no motive, where's the case? So anyway, that testimony from the people across the hall from the kid's apartment, that was very powerful. And uh, didn't they say something about an argument between the boy and the father around uh, 7 o'clock that night? I mean, I could be wrong. It, it was 8 o'clock, not 7. That's right, 8 o'clock. They heard an argument, but they couldn't hear what it was about. And they heard the father hit the boys, and they saw the boy walk Angle out of the house. Now, what does that prove? Well, it doesn't exactly prove anything. It's just part of the picture. Never said it proved anything. You said it revealed a motive. The prosecuting attorney said the same thing. Well, well, I don't think it's a very strong motive. This boy, he's been hit so many times in his life that violence is practically a, a normal state of affairs for him. I can't see two slaps provoking him into committing murder. It may have been two slaps too many. Everyone has a breaking point. Anything else? No. Okay. How about the next gentleman? Me? Hmm. I don't know what to say what already hasn't been said. I mean, just look at the kid's record. He's 0 for 5. Well, I mean, look, at 10, he was in children's court for throwing a rock at his teacher. At 14, he was in reform school, stole a car, been arrested for mugging, been picked up twice for trying to slash another teen with a knife. He's real quick with those switchblade knives, you know? I mean, this, this is a real fine boy. Ever since he was 5, his father would beat him regularly. He used his fists. So would I, a kid like that. Wouldn't you call those beatings a motive for him to kill his father? I don't know. They're, they're a motive for him to be a very angry kid. I'll say that. No, it's these kids the way they are nowadays. Angry. Hostile. Can't do a damn thing with them. Just the way they talk to you. I mean, when I was a boy, I used to call my father Sir. That's right. Sir. Ever hear a boy call his father that anymore? Fathers don't think it's important anymore. Yeah, have you got any kids? Two. I've got one. He's 20. <laughs> we did everything for that boy, and what happened? When he was nine, he ran away from a fight. <laughs> I saw him. I was so ashamed, I almost threw up. I said to him, I'm going to make a man out of you, or I'm going to bust you in half trying. Made a man out of him, all right. When he was 16, we had a battle. He hit me in the face. He's big, you know? Haven't seen him in two years. What a rotten kid. I mean, you work your heart out. All right, let's just get on with it. I think we're missing the point here. This boy, let's say he's a product of a filthy neighborhood and a broken home. 
we can't help that. We're here to decide whether he's guilty or innocent of murder, not to go into reasons why I grew up this way. He was born in a slum. Slums are breeding grounds for criminals. I know it, so do you. It's no secret. Children from slum backgrounds are potential menaces to society. Now I think- you can say that again. The kids who crawl into those places are real trash. I don't want any part of them, I'm telling hey, you. I've lived in a slum my whole life. I nursed that trash in Harlem Hospital six nights a week. Oh, now wait I used to play in a backyard that was filled with garbage. Maybe still smells on wait me. Wait a second. <laughs> now listen, buddy, you can't... Now, let's be reasonable. There's nothing personal. There is something personal. All right, come on, Bella. Let's not be so sensitive. It didn't mean you. Sensitivity, I understand. All right, let's stop all this arguing. We're wasting time here. Uh, it's your turn. Let's go. Well, I, I didn't expect a turn. I thought you all were supposed to be convincing me. Wasn't that the idea? Check. I forgot that. <laughs> well, what's the difference? He's the one who's keeping us here. Let's hear what he's got to say. Well, no, just a second. We decided to do it a certain way. Let's stick to what we said. <laughs> Stop being a kid, will ya? A kid? Listen, what do you mean by that? Uh, what do you think I meant? K-I-D. Kid! <laughs> what? Just because I'm trying to keep this thing organized? Listen, you want to do it? Here, you sit here, you take the responsibility. I'll just shut up, that's all. Listen, what are you getting so hot about? Just calm down, will ya? Calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. Here, you wanna sit here? Come on, Mr. Foreman, let's see how great you're on the show. Oh my god, did you ever see such a thing? You think it's funny or something? Alright, take it easy. It's unimportant anyways. Unimportant? You wanna try it? No, no, you're doing a beautiful job. No one wants to change? Yeah, you're doing great. Just hang in there and pitch. Alright, let's hear from someone. Well... If you all want to hear how I feel about it right now, it's, it's okay with me. I don't care what you do. All right. I haven't got anything brilliant. I only know as much as you do. According to the testimony, the boy looks guilty. Maybe he is. I sat there in court for three days, listening while the evidence built up. Everyone sounded so positive about this case that I, I started to get a peculiar feeling. I mean, nothing is that positive. There was questions I would have liked to ask. Maybe those questions wouldn't have meant anything. I don't know, I just started to get the feeling the defense counsel wasn't doing his job. He let too many things go. Little things. What little things? Listen, when these guys don't ask questions, that's because they know the answer already and figure they'll be hurt. Maybe. It's also possible for a, a lawyer to just be plain stupid, right? <laughs> you sound like you've met my brother-in-law. <laughs> I kept putting myself in the boy's shoes. I would have asked for another lawyer. If I was on trial for my life, I'd want my lawyer to, to tear the prosecution witness to shreds, or at least to try. Look, there was, there was one alleged witness to this case, and there was another who said he, he heard the killing and saw the boy run out afterwards, and, and there was a lot of circumstantial evidence, but really, those two witnesses were the entire case for the prosecution. Supposing they were wrong? Wait a minute. What do you mean by supposing they were wrong? Could they be wrong? They sat on the stand under oath. What are you trying to tell us? They're only people. People make mistakes. Could they be wrong? No, I don't think so. Do you know so? Well, look, no one can really know a thing like that. This isn't an exact science. That's right, it isn't. All right, let's just try to get to the point here. What about the knife they found on the father's chest? Well, wait a minute. There are some people who haven't spoken yet. Shouldn't we give All them right, a chance to get All right, well, they can talk whenever they'd like. Just be yeah. quiet a second, will you? Okay. What about the knife? You know, the one that... Fine, upright boy. Admitted to buying on the night of the murder? Let's <clears> talk <throat> about that. All right, let's talk about it. Let's get it in here and look at it. I'd like to see it again. Mr. Foreman, we all know what it looks like. He ain't get out of seeing it again. You brought it up. The gentleman has the right to see exhibits and evidence. The knife and the way it was bought is pretty strong evidence. Don't you think so? I do. Good. Now, suppose we take these facts one at a time. One. The boy admitted going out of his house at 8 o'clock on the night of the murder after being punched several times by his father. He didn't say punch. He said hit. There's a difference between a slap and a punch. After being hit several times by his father. Two, the boy admitted going directly to a neighborhood junk shop where he bought a, uh, what do you call these things? Uh, switch knife. A switchblade knife. Thank you. Three, this wasn't what you call an ordinary knife. It had a very unusual carved handle. Four. The storekeeper who sold it to him identified the knife in court and said it was the only one of its kind he had ever had in stock. Five, that, oh, about 8.45, the boy ran into three friends of his in front of a diner. Am I correct so far? Yes, you are. <laughs> you bet he is. Then you all better listen to this man. He knows what he's talking about. The boy talked to his friends for about an hour, leaving them at 9.45. During this time, they saw the switch knife. Six, each of them identified the death of one in court as that same knife. Seven. The boy arrived home at about 10 o'clock. 
Now, this is where the story is offered by the boy and the state begin to diverge slightly. He claims that a knife fell through a hole in his pocket sometime between 11 o'clock and 3.15 in the morning while he was on a trip to the movies. <laughs> while he was on his trip to the movies. No one saw him go out of the bath at 11.30. No one at the theater identified him. He couldn't even remember the names of the pictures he saw. What actually happened is this. The boy stayed home, had another fight with his father, stabbed him to death with a knife at 10 minutes after 12, and fled from the house. He even remembered to wet the knife clean of fingerprints. Thank you. Everyone connected with the case identified this knife. Now are you trying to tell me that it really fell through a hole in the boy's pocket and that somebody picked it up off the street, went to the boy's house, and stabbed his father with it just to be amusing? No. I'm saying that it's possible the boy lost the knife and that someone else stabbed the father with a similar one. It's possible. Take a look at that knife. I've never seen one like it. Neither had the storekeeper who sold it to the boy. Aren't you asking us to accept a pretty incredible coincidence? I'm not asking you to accept it. I'm just saying that it's possible. And I'm saying it's not possible. Hey, what are you doing? That, that knife! Whoa, whoa, whoa. How do you like that? Look at it! It's the same knife! What are you trying to do? What's going on here? Who do you think quiet. you are? Let's be quiet. Where'd you get that knife? I went walking for a few hours last night. I was just thinking. I walked through the boy's neighborhood. That comes from a pawn shop three blocks from his house. It costs six dollars. It's against the law to buy or sell switchblade knives. That's right. I broke the law. <laughs> Listen, you pulled a real bright trick here. Now supposing you tell me what you proved. Maybe there are ten knives like that. So what? Maybe there are. So what? What does that mean? Is that the discovery of the age or something? It would still be an incredible coincidence for someone to have stabbed the father with the same kind of knife. That's right, he's right. Odds are a million to one. It's possible. But not very probable. Listen, let's take seats. There's no point in milling around here. It's interesting you'd find a knife exactly like the one the boy bought. What's interesting? You think that proves anything? Well, no, maybe it huh, adds interesting. something. Interesting. Oh. Look, how come the kid bought the knife to begin with? Well, he claims that... Oh, I know, I know. He claims he bought it as a gift for his friend. He was gonna give it to the other kid after he broke the other kid's knife, dropping it on the pavement. That's what he says. Bullshit. No, no, he... The boy did testify that the boy did break his knife. Yeah? How long before the killing? Three weeks, right? So how come our noble lad buys this knife one half hour after being slapped by his father and three and a half hours before they find it shoved up in the father's chest? Oh, wait a minute. Didn't he say he was going to give the knife to his friend? Oh, maybe he just wanted to test it out. Give him a little guarantee. <laughs> Let me ask you this. It's one of the questions I would have liked to ask in court. If the boy bought the knife to use on his father, how come he showed it to three friends just hours before the killing? Listen, all this is just talk. The boy lied and you know it. He may have lied. Do you think he lied? <laughs> now that's a stupid question. Sure he lied. Do you? You know my answer. He lied. You think he lied? I... I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Wait a minute. What are you, the kid's lawyer or something? Who are you to start cross-examining us? Isn't that what's supposed to happen in a jury room? Look, there are still 11 of us in here who think he's guilty. Yeah. So if you're trying to hang this jury, go right ahead. Because the kid will be tried again and found guilty as sure as he's born. You're probably right. So what are you going to do about it? We could be here all frickin' night. It's only one night. A boy may die. Father. Anybody got a deck of cards? Hey, I don't think you ought to make a joke out of this. What do you want me to do about it? Listen, I don't see what all this business about a knife has really got to do with anything. Somebody saw the boy stab his father. What more do we need? Listen, I got three garages of mine going to pot while you're talking. So let's get done and let's get out of here. The knife was very important to the district attorney. He spent one more Oh, he's morning. like a 15th assistant or something. What does he know? Okay, I think we ought to get out of it now. These side arguments only sort us up. What about it? You're the only one. I have a proposition to make to you all. I'd like for you, 11 men, to vote by secret ballot. I'll abstain. There are still 11 votes for guilty. I won't stand alone. We'll take a guilty verdict into the judge right now. But if anybody votes not guilty, We'll stay here, and we'll talk this thing out. Well, that's it. If you're ready to try this thing, so am I. Finally, you're behaving like a reasonable man. <laughs> I'll buy that. Okay. 
That sounds fair. Let's vote. Anyone doesn't agree? Okay, pass these along. How do you like that? And another chap flips his goddamn wig, huh? All right. Who was it? Come on. Now, I want to know. Excuse me. This was a secret ballot. We agreed to this. Secret? What do you mean, secret? If there are no secrets in a jury room, I know who it was. Brother, you're really something. <laughs> I mean, you come in here and you vote guilty like the rest of us, and then this golden-voiced preacher over here starts to tear your heart out with stories about a poor little boy who just couldn't help becoming a murderer. So you change your vote. If that isn't the most ridiculous thing I ever... Why don't you just drop a quarter in his collection box? Wait a minute. You can't talk to me like that. No, no, where does he get the right to shout All right, let's like calm down. Who does he think he is? Just, I mean, did you see him? Just sit down. He's very excitable. Forget it. It doesn't matter. What? You bet I'm excitable. We're trying to put a guilty man into the chair where he belongs, and all of a sudden somebody's telling us fairy tales! And we're listening! Take it easy. What do you mean, take it easy? Would you like to see a proven murderer walk the streets? Why don't you give him his knife back? Make it easier for okay. him! Stop the yelling. Who's got something constructive to say? Please, I've always thought that in this country, a man was entitled to have an unpopular Let's opinion. Let's stick to the subject. What made you change your vote? He didn't change his vote. I did. <laughs> Would you like me to tell you why? No. I wouldn't like you to tell me why. Well, I'd like to anyway, if you don't mind. <laughs> Do we have to listen to this? Hey, look, the man wants to talk. Thank you. Now, this gentleman has been standing alone against us. He doesn't say that the boy isn't guilty. He just isn't sure. Well, it's not easy to stand alone against the ridicule of others. He gambled for support, and I gave it to him. The boy on trial, probably guilty. But I respect his motives, and I want to hear more. For the time being, the vote is pending, too. <laughs> hey, I'm talking. You he, have He can't hear you. He never will. This little speech is over. Maybe we could go on. I think we ought to take a break. One man's inside there. Let's wait for him. Looks like we're really hung up here. I mean... That thing with the old man, that was pretty unexpected. I wish I knew how we could break this up. You know, in advertising, I didn't tell you I worked for an ad agency, didn't I? Well, in the agency, there are these strange people, not strange really, they just have peculiar ways of expressing themselves. I mean, it's probably the same in your business. What do you do? I'm a watchmaker. Really? I imagine the finest watchmakers come from Europe. Anyways, in the agency, when they reach a point like this in a meeting, there's always some character with some idea and the way to receive the idea with some kind of phrase. Like, some account exec will say, let's run up a flagpole and see if anyone salutes it, or go on a bus and see if it gets off a Wall Street. I mean, it's idiotic, but it's funny. All right, look, I got a little excited before. I mean, I mean you know how it is. I, I didn't mean to get nasty or anything. <coughs> say, you a salesman? I'm an architect. Architect. You know what the soft sell is? Because you'd be pretty good at it. I got a different technique. Jokes. Drinks. <laughs> Knock them on their asses. Made 27000 like that selling marmalade last year. That's well, not bad, considering it's marmalade. <laughs> all right, look. What are you getting out of this, kicks? The boy's guilty, pal. So why don't we all just get home before we all get sore throats? What's the difference whether you get one here at the ball game? No difference, pal. No difference at all. Nice bunch of guys. I guess they're the same as any. That loud guy? The one time I was a kid before? The way he was talking. Boy, that was embarrassing. Yeah, I guess so. 
What a murderous day. I think we'll be here much longer. I don't know. He's guilty. There's no doubt out in the whole world. We should have been done already. I mean, listen, I don't care, you know? It beats working. You think he's innocent? I don't know. It's possible. I don't know you, but I'm Ben. You've never been wronger in your whole life. You ought to give it up. You're wasting your time. Suppose you were the one on trial. I'm not used to supposing. My boss usually does the supposing. I'm just a working man. But I'll try one. Suppose you talk us all out of this, and the boy really did knife his father. Okay, let's take seats. Hmm. Looks like we'll be here for dinner. Let's get down to business. Who would like to start it off? Well, Maybe we'd I'd be like profitable to make a point. if we... Pardon me. I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, go ahead, it's all right. Okay, well, this is probably a small point, but anyway. The boy had a motive for the killing. The beatings and all? So if he didn't do it, who did? Who else had the motive? I mean, nobody goes out and kills someone without a motive. Not unless he's just plain nuts, right? As far as I know, we're here to decide whether or not the boy on trial is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. We're not concerned with anybody else's motives. That's a job for the police. Very true, but we can't help letting the only motive we know of creep into our thoughts, can we? And we can't help asking ourselves who else might have had a motive. Logically, these things follow. This gentleman is asking a reasonable question. Somebody killed him. If it wasn't the boy, who was it? Majalewski. <laughs> Now you're talking about the man I love. If you haven't got anything to add besides jokes, I suggest you listen. All right. It's just blowing off steam. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, maybe you can answer me. Who else might have killed the father? Well, the father wasn't exactly a model citizen. The boy's lawyer outlined his background in the closing statement. He was in prison once. He was known to be a compulsive gambler and a, a pretty consistent loser. He spent a lot of time in neighborhood bars and would get into fights after a couple of drinks, usually over a woman. This was a, a tough, cruel, primitive sort of man who, who never held a job for more than six months in his life. So, here are a few possibilities. He could have been killed by someone he'd spent time in prison with, by a bookmaker, by a man he'd beaten up, by a woman he'd picked up, by any one of the people he was known to spend time with. Boy, that's the biggest load of crap I think I ever... Look, we know the father was a bum, so has that got to do with anything? I didn't bring it up. I was asked who might have killed the father. I gave my answer. That gentleman over there asked a direct question. <laughs> Everyone's a lawyer. All right, look, suppose you answer me this. The old man said he heard the boy yell out, I'm going to kill you. Then he hears the body fall, and he saw the boy running down the stairs and out of the house. What does all that mean to you? I was wondering how clearly the old man could have heard the boy's voice through the ceiling. No, he didn't hear it through the ceiling. His window was open, and so was the window upstairs. It was a hot night, remember? The voice came from another apartment. It's, it's not easy to identify a voice, especially a shouting one. He identified it in court. Pick the boy's voice out of five other voices, blindfolded. That was just an ambitious district attorney putting on a show. Look, the old man knows the boy's voice very well. They've lived in the same house for years. But to identify it positively from the apartment downstairs, isn't it possible he was wrong? Maybe he thought the boy was upstairs and assumed the voice he heard was the boy's. I think that's a bit far-fetched. <laughs> Brother, you can say that again. Look, the old man heard the father's body falling, and then he saw the boy running out of the house 15 seconds later. I mean, he saw the boy. Check. And don't forget about the woman from across the street. She looked right onto the open window and saw the boy stab his father. I mean, isn't that enough for you? Not right now. No, it oh isn't. Oh my god, how'd you like him? It's like talking into a dead telephone. The woman saw the killing through the windows of a passing L train. The train had six cars, and she saw it through the windows of the last two cars. She remembered the most insignificant details. I don't think you can argue with that. What do you got to say about it? I don't know. It doesn't seem right to me. Suppose you think about it. Let me your pencil. I, I was wondering if anybody has any idea how long it takes a moving L train going at medium... Wait a minute! This isn't a game. Who do you think you are? All right, take it easy. Come on now, sit down. I've got a good mind to belt him one. 
Oh, please. I don't want any fights in here. I mean, did you see him the nerve? The absolute nerve. Alright, forget it. It's not even important. Know what I mean? Oh, this isn't a game. Who do you think he's dealing with here? Come on, now it's all over. Let's take our seats. <laughs> What's all over? I want an apology. Okay, Noisy. He apologizes. Now let's hear the man to say. Thank you. I was wondering if, if anybody has any idea how long it takes a moving L train going at medium speed to pass a given point. What's that got to do with anything? How long? Take a guess. I wouldn't have the slightest idea. What do you think? I don't know. About 10 or 12 seconds, maybe? What's all this for? I'd say that was a fair guess. Anyone else? That sounds about right to me. Come on, what's this guessing game for? What do you think? Um, 10 seconds, approximately. All right, say 10 seconds. What are you getting at? This. It takes 10 seconds for a moving L train to pass a given point. Now, say that point is the open window of the apartment in which the killing took place. You can practically reach out that window and touch the L line, right? Right. Now, let me ask you this. Has anyone here ever lived next to an L-line before? Well, I just got done painting an apartment and overlooked an L-line. I'm a house painter, you know? I was there for three days. What was it like? Uh, what do you mean? Noisy? <sighs> Brother. Well, didn't matter. We're all punching our business anyway. I lived in a second floor apartment next to an L-line before. When, when the windows open and the train's going by, the, the noise is almost unbearable. You can't hear yourself think. All right, you can't hear yourself think. Will you get to the point? I will. Let's take the two pieces of testimony and, and try to put them together. First, the old man in the apartment downstairs. Now, he said he heard the boy yell out, I'm going to kill you, then heard a body fall a split second later. W one second later, right? That's right. Second, the woman across the street. Now, she said she turned and looked out her window and saw the killing take place through the last two cars of a passing elevated train. The last two cars, right? All right! What point are you making here? This. We agreed it takes a six-car L train ten seconds to pass the given point. Now, since the woman saw the killing through the last two cars, we can assume the body fell just as the train passed by. Therefore, the train had been roaring by the old man's house for a full ten seconds before the body hit the ground. The old man, according to his own testimony, would have had to hear the boy yell out, I'm going to kill you with the L train Roaring past his nose. It's not possible he could have heard it. That's idiotic. Sure he could have heard it. Do you think so? The old man said he did. That's enough for me. If he heard anything at all, he, he could not have identified the voice as the boys with the L rolling by. I mean, you're talking about a matter of seconds here. Nothing could be that accurate. I think that testimony that could put a human being in the electric chair should be that accurate. You know, I don't think he could have heard it. Yeah, maybe he didn't hear it. I mean, with the L noise? <laughs> What's the matter with you people? Well, it stands to reason. That's idiotic. I mean, sure he could have heard it. This guy's crazy. Listen, I think we've proved that the old man couldn't have possibly heard the boy a lot. I'm going to kill you, but even what if are you talking about? Even you if, didn't prove it at all. Even if we suppose that he did, this phrase, how many times have each of us used it? I could kill you for that, darling. Do that once more, Junior, and I'll kill you. Come on, Rocky, kill him. We say it every day. It doesn't mean we're going to kill someone. What are you trying to give us here? The phrase was, I'm going to kill you, and he shouted it at the top of his lungs. Don't tell me he didn't mean it. Anybody who says a thing like that the way he said it, they mean it. Well, gee, I don't know. I was at my job at the bank a couple of weeks ago. The guy next to me calls me an idiot, so I yelled at him, no, I'm gonna... listen. This guy's trying to tell you things that aren't so... He was gonna kill him. He said he was gonna kill him, and he did kill him! Let me ask you this. Do you really think the boy would yell out a thing like that so the, the whole neighborhood could hear him? I don't think he would do that. He's much too bright for that. Right? <laughs> He's a common, ignorant slob. He don't even speak good English. He doesn't even speak good English. Uh, Mr. Foreman, I'd like to change my vote to not guilty. <laughs> oh, brother. Are you sure? You sure? Yes. Okay. Sure. Well, it's nine to three in favor of guilty. Oh my God! If this isn't the living end, what are you basing it off of? Stories the guy made up? He ought to write for Amazing Detective Monthly. He'd make a fortune. Look, there are facts staring you right in the face, and every one of them says this kid killed his old man. For crying out loud, his own lawyer knew he didn't stand a chance. <laughs> his own lawyer. He deserves the chair. Does he? It's happened before that someone's been convicted of murder and, and executed, and years later, someone else has confessed to the crime. Sometimes 
Sometimes the facts that are staring you in the face are wrong. Right. I'm talking to him, not to you. Look, the kid had his own lawyer, so how much you got so much to say about it? The lawyer was court appointed. <laughs> so what does that mean? Well, it could mean a lot of things. It could mean he didn't want the case. It could mean he, resent, he was resented being appointed. It's the kind of case that brings him nothing. I mean, no money, no glory, not even, not even much chance of winning. It's not a very promising situation for a young lawyer. You'd have to really believe in his client to put up a good fight, as he pointed out a minute ago. He obviously didn't. Oh, sure he didn't. Sure he didn't, of course, because who would? Maybe his mother. I don't know, but... <laughs> I mean, look at the time. Let's just hurry this up. Uh, pardon, I've made some notes here. <laughs> notes? <laughs> I would like, please, to say something. Uh, from what was pres Well, I've been listening very closely, and from what was presented at the trial, the boy looks guilty but it seems to me that this gentleman has some very good points to make. I think it would be worth it to go deeper. Come on, will ya? There is a question I would like to ask. We assume that the boy committed murder. He stabbed his father in the chest and ran away. This was at 10 minutes after 12. Now, how was he caught by the police when he came, well, he came home at around three o'clock or so and was captured in the hallway of his apartment by two detectives? My question is, if he really had been the one to kill his father, why would he come back three hours later? Wouldn't he be afraid of being caught? Look, he came back to get his knife. It's not nice to leave knives sticking around in people's chests, especially the relatives. The boy knew that there were people who had identified the knife as the one he had just bought. He had to get to it before the police did. But if he knew that the knife could be identified, why did he leave it there in the first place? Well, I think we can assume he ran out in a state of panic, and then when he finally calmed down, he realized that he had left it there. This then depends on your definition of panic. He was calm enough to see to it that there were no fingerprints left on the knife. So where did his panic start, and where did it end? Look, you can forget all that other stuff. He still went back to dig out the knife and get rid of it. Three hours later? Sure, three hours later. If I had been the boy and I had stabbed my father, I would not have come back three hours later. I would be afraid of being caught, so I would stay away, knife or no knife. Listen, you voted guilty, didn't you? What side are you on? I don't believe I have to be loyal to one side or another. I'm simply asking questions. Well, this is just off the top of my head, but if I were the boy and I had done stabbing and everything, I'd take the chance to go back for the knife. I bet the boy probably figured that no one would find the body since it was the middle of the night and that they'd find it the next day. Uh, pardon, this is my whole point. According to the woman across the street, a moment after she saw the killing, that is, a moment after the L train had gone by, she screamed and then went to her phone the police. Now, surely the boy must have heard this scream and known that somebody had seen something. I don't think he would have gone back for the knife if he had been the one to do it. Two points. One, in a state, in a state of panic, there, he may not have heard it. Perhaps it wasn't very loud. And two, if he did hear it, he may not have connected with his own act. Remember, the boy lived in a neighborhood where screams are fairly commonplace. That's right. There's your answer. Maybe. Maybe the boy did stab his father, didn't hear the screams, did run out in a panic, did calm down three hours later and come back to try and get the knife. Maybe all those things are so, but maybe they're not. I, I think there's enough doubt to make us wonder whether he was there at all when the killing happened. What do you mean, doubt? <laughs> what are you talking about? Didn't the old man see him running out of the house? <laughs> this guy's twisting the facts, I'm telling you. Well, did or didn't the old man see the boy running out of the house at 1210? <laughs> well, did or didn't he? He says he did. Says he did. Boy, how do you like that? Well, did or didn't the woman across the street see the kid stick the knife into his father? She says she did. You know, you're making it out like it don't matter what people say. What you want to believe, you believe, and what you don't want to believe, you don't. I mean, what kind of a way is that? What do you think these people get on the witness stand for their health? I'm telling you, men, witnesses are being doubted in here. The facts are being changed around, and there's no reason for it. Witnesses can make yeah, sure, when you want them to, they do, you know what I mean? Okay, let's hold the yelling down. No, you know what? You keep saying that. Maybe what we need is a little yelling in here. I mean, these guys are going off every which way. Did hear the scream, didn't hear the scream. I mean, what's the difference? There's just little details. You're forgetting the important stuff I'd like stuff to call here. for another vote. <laughs> no, boy, I'm telling I can't There's stand another this vote called for habit taking seats. What are we going to gain by voting again? I don't know what the gentleman asked. <laughs> I never saw so much time spent on nothing. It only takes a second. Okay. I guess the fastest way is to find out who is voting not guilty. All those in favor of not guilty, raise your hands. Still the same. One, two, three, not guilties, nine guilties. <laughs> Great. 
So where is this going to get us? We could yickety-yak here till next Tuesday. Uh, pardon. I vote not guilty. Oh, come on oh. now. I mean, <laughs> it's like we're all going crazy in here or something. Why don't you just pay attention to the facts? I, I mean, tell him, will you? It's going to be a goddamn joke. Vote is eight to four in favor of guilty. I'd like you to tell me why you changed your vote. Come on, give me reasons. I don't have to defend my decision to you. I have a reasonable doubt in my mind. Well, what's reasonable doubt? That's nothing but words. <laughs> Take a look at this. The kid you just decided was not guilty was seen ramming this thing into his father. Look at it, Mr. Reasonable Doubt. That's not the knife. Or don't you remember? Oh, brilliant! <sighs> I'm telling you, this is the craziest. I mean, if this guy was sitting ringside at the Dempsey Furpo fight, he'd be trying to tell us Furpo won. Look, what about the old man? Didn't we all hear him say he got up 15 seconds and ran to his door after the killing to see the kid bolting down the stairs? Well, he's only saying that to be important. What's the point of the whole thing Wait if... a second. Oh, the Milwaukee Rooters heard from. Did the old man say he ran to the door? A ran, walked, same difference. He said he ran to the door. At least I think he did. You know, I don't remember what he said, but I don't see how he could have run. He said he went from his bedroom to the front door. That's enough, isn't it? Wait, where was his bedroom located again? <laughs> Down the hall somewhere. I thought you remembered everything. Don't you remember that? No. Mr. Foreman, I'd like to see the diagram of the apartment again. Oh, God. Why don't they just have the case be run over again so they can get it straight in your head? Mr. Foreman? I heard you. Come on, now. I mean, how come you're the only one who wants to see exhibits all the time? I want to see this one, too. And I'm going to stop wasting time. If we're going to start wading through all that business about where the body we're was not. found... We're not. Not unless someone else wants to. I'd like to see if a very old man who, who drags one leg when he walks because he had a stroke last year could get from his bed to his front door in 15 seconds. What? He said 20 seconds. He said 15. Now I'm telling you, he said 20. What are you trying he to He said 15. How does he know how long 20 seconds is? He can't judge that kind of thing. He said 15 seconds. He was very positive about it. He was an old man. You saw him. Half the time he was confused. How could he be sure about anything? Say what you like. I still don't see how anybody could think the boy's not guilty. Well, let's see if the details bear him out. As soon as the body fell to the floor, he said he heard footsteps upstairs running to the front door. He heard the front door open, and the footsteps start down the stairs. Now, he got to his own front door as, as soon as he could. He swore it could not have been more than 15 seconds. Now, if the killer began running well, immediately... Well, maybe he didn't. The old man said he did. You know, you ought to be down at that hair splitters convention in Atlantic City, you know? Hey, listen, baseball. Why don't you stop making smart remarks all the time? Oh, my friend, for your three dollars a day, you're listening to everything I got. Now that you've got this thing in here, what about it? May I? This is the apartment in which the killing took place. The old man's apartment is, is directly beneath it and exactly the same. This is the L-line, the stairs, and the hallway. A bedroom, another bedroom, a bathroom, living room, kitchen. Now, the old man was in his bed in this room. He said he got up, went out into the hall, went down the hall, and opened the front door just in time to see the boy racing down the stairs. Am I right so far? That's the story. For the 19th time. All in 15 seconds. Correct. Now, the bed is at the window in this room. It's, it's roughly 12 feet from the bed to the bedroom door. And the length of the hall is, is 43 feet. The old man had to get up, walk 12 feet, open up the bedroom door, walk 43 feet, and open up the front door all in 15 seconds. Do you think he could have done it? Sure he could have done it. He can only walk very slowly. They had to help him into the witness chair. You're making it sound like it's a long walk. It's not. For an old man who's had a stroke, it's a long walk. This is the old man's bed. What's going on here? I want to try this thing. Let's see how long it took him. Uh, what, what do you mean you want to try it? <laughs> Why didn't the kid's lawyer bring it up if it's so important? Well, maybe he just didn't think of it. What do you mean he didn't think of it? You think the man's an idiot or something? I mean, it's an obvious thing. Well, did you think of it? Well, well, listen, buddy, it doesn't even matter whether I thought of it. All right, let's hold it down. Yeah, he didn't bring it up because he knew the answer would hurt his case. Now, what do you think about that? All right. This is the old man's bed. I'm going to pace off 12 feet the length of the bedroom. You're crazy. You can't recreate a thing like that. I would like to see it. This is the door to the hall. Now, the hall is... 43 feet. I'll pace over to that wall and back again. Look, 
This is absolutely insane. What's the idea of wasting everyone's time in here? According to you, it'll only take 15 seconds. We can spare that. Okay, pass me another chair, please. Now, this is the door to the stairwell. It was chain locked according to the testimony. Does anybody have a watch with a second hand? I have. When you want me to start, stomp your foot. That'll be the body falling. Time me from there. Anyone for charades? Never seen anything like this in my entire life. Okay, I'm ready. Come on, let's go here. I'm waiting for the second hand to reach 60. Oh, come on, snap it up. He walked twice as fast as that. This is, I think, even faster than the old man walked in the courtroom. If you think I should go faster, I will. Oh, my God, will we get this kid stuff over with? Stop. Right. What's the time? 42 seconds on the dot. 42 seconds? This is what I think happened. The old man had heard the fight between the boy and his father a few hours earlier. And while lying in bed, he heard a body fall. And he heard the woman scream from across the street. He got up, tried to get to his front door, heard someone racing down the stairs, and assumed it was the boy. I think that's possible. <laughs> assumed? Now listen, you people, I've seen all kinds of dishonesty in my day, but this little display takes the cake. I mean, you come in here with your sanctimonious talk about slum kids and injustice, and you start getting through to some of these old ladies in here. Not gonna get through to me. I've had enough. What's the matter with you people? Every single one of you knows this kid is guilty. I mean, he's got to burn. We're letting him slip through our fingers here. Slip through our fingers? Are you his executioner? I'm one of them. Maybe you'd like to pull the switch. Huh, for this kid? You bet I'd like to pull the switch. I'm sorry for you. Don't give me that. Ever since we walked into this room, you've been behaving like a, a self-appointed public avenger. I'm telling you now, shut up. You want this boy to die because you personally want it, not because of the facts. Shut up. You're a sadist. Shut up, you son of a bitch. Ugh. Let go of me. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. Now, you don't really mean you'll kill me, do you? We're going to take a 10 minute intermission. Cough drop so that for that line to make sense, when we're at the water cooler, I give you the cough drop. At the water cooler. So like when they're like zooming in on other people, I'll give you the cough drop at the water cooler. Wait a second, the door is it at the table? It was at the table, but they skipped over it. So that's what I'm saying, like to make that line make sense in act two, I'll hand you the cough drop at the water cooler. Okay, so when I'm Yeah. So like we'll walk over to the cop. Like Marty, once I walk over, Marty. What was the first gist of the thing? I mean, like, after the first cough drop, because my cough drop line makes sense. Before we start talking, I'm confused. Did you skip the cough drop? Has someone skipped over it? Yeah, it got skipped over. So we're gonna hit the cough drop. The cough drop line, and then he has another. Well, he don't say he Lewis. No, you don't say Lewis. Just wait until I say the cough drop. So like he says, he says, can I get a cough drop? And then you say, so why'd you change your vote? So that, that line makes sense. Because yeah, because then he has another line about the cough drop, and that wouldn't make any sense if I never gave him a cough drop. Yeah. I was going to do it, and like, I didn't want to interrupt the flow of things, 
So like, if we could just discuss it before we actually do it, then that would be good. I handle it too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Mrs. Nelia, me and Joaquin are still going to do the cough drop thing at the water cooler so that the line makes sense later on. Yeah, 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 you help us out. <laughs> Okay, there's five minutes. Five minutes? Oh, yeah. Alright, I'm running for... I'm good with tape, but I might need to take a pee-pee a, a pee -pee break. Wait, oh, is that the live stream? Yes. My sister said my mic was on and I said, did I say PP break with the mic on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, is that a knife? Yeah, it's not like we skipped over like this. Water cooler. We're not.
don't jinx it. <laughs> I'm not worse skin, I'm holding it. Wait, wait, wait. Is that that thing guarding it? No, 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 this is my grandfather's. Thank you. Where's the skip? What, what line was the skip? Think about it. I didn't even notice Justin's save. Well, that's the way that that's the way that life works. This is it. This game is right before yeah, it's right before the world draws back. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't count. <laughs> there it is. We out. Is everything all right, gentlemen? I thought I heard something. No, there's nothing wrong. Just a little argument. Everything's okay. Um, 
we're finished with this. All right. Well, what are you all staring at? Well, I suppose someone has to start this thing off again. <sighs> it's getting late. What do they do? Take us out somewhere for some dinner? How do I know? I wonder what happens if we can't come to a verdict tonight. I've got a boy at home with the mumps. He's out to here. The wife says he looks like Khrushchev. Pardon, this fighting, this is not why we are here to fight. We have a responsibility. This, I've always thought, is the remarkable thing about democracy, that we are, um, what's the word, uh, notified, that we are notified by mail to come and decide on the guilt or innocence of a man that we've never heard of before. We have nothing to gain or lose by our verdict. This is what makes us strong. We should not make it a personal thing. Um, if no one else has an idea, I may have a cutie here. I haven't put much thought into it, but let's we'll around the stoop and see if the cat licks it up. See if the cat licks it up. It wasn't much of an idea anyways. Look how dark it's getting. We're gonna have a storm. Boy, it's hot. <coughs> Pardon, don't you sweat? No, I don't. Uh, listen, I was thinking maybe we shouldn't take our vote. Great idea. Maybe we follow this one up with dancing and refreshments. <sighs> Mr. Foreman? It's all right with me. Anyone doesn't want to vote? I think we ought to have an open ballot. Call out our votes, you know? See who stands where. That sounds fair. Anyone object? <coughs> Last vote was eight to four in favor of guilty. All right, I'll call off your jury numbers. I vote guilty. Number two? Not guilty. Number three? Guilty. Number four? Guilty. Number five? Not guilty. Number six? Not guilty. Number seven? Guilty. Number eight? Not guilty. Number nine? Not guilty. Number 10? Guilty. Number 11? Not guilty. Number 12. Guilty. Six to six. Six to six. I'm telling you, some of you people in here are really out of your minds. I mean, a kid like that. I don't think the kind of boy he is has anything to do with it. The facts are supposed to determine the case. Oh, don't give me any of that. I'm sick and tired of these facts. You could just twist them up any way you like. You know what I mean? But that's exactly the point that this gentleman has been making. I mean, he just keeps shouting at the top of his lungs. I wish I was a bit younger. It's very hot in here. Would you like some water? No, thank you. You want a cough drop? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Huh. It's gonna rain. No. How'd you figure that one out, Blue Eyes? Look. Why'd you change your vote? Well, it just seemed to me I mean, that you know you don't got a leg to stand on, right? Well, I don't feel the way. There's a lot of details that never came out. Details? I mean, you're just letting yourself get bulldozed by a bunch of, uh, what do you call them, uh, intellectuals. No, that's not so. Oh, come on. You, you're like everyone else. You think too much and, and get mixed up. Know what I mean? Now, I don't think you have any right to. Loud mouth. Wow, look at that come down, will ya? Think it'll cool things off? Yeah. I guess so. Boy, look at it go. Reminds me of the storm we had, uh, November or something. What a storm. Right in the middle of the game. We're behind 7 to 6. We're just starting to move ball. Off tackle, you know. Boom, boom. Boy, I'll never forget that. We had this kid, Slattery, a real ox. I wish I had another one like him. Oh, I probably forgot to tell you. I'm the assistant head football coach at the Andrew J. McCorkle High School. That's in Queens. So anyway, we're moving real nice. Their line is coming apart. I'm telling you, this Slattery, boy, whew. All of a sudden, it starts to move cats and dogs. I'm telling you, I swear we almost balled. We couldn't go nowhere. Hey, let's see if we can't get this fan going in here. <laughs> hey, now it works. Must have been connected to the light switch. Some rain, huh? Well, what'd you think of this thing? It's even Steven. Kind of surprising, isn't it? Yes. Listen, that, that, that business before, you know, that guy was baiting me. I mean, that doesn't prove anything. Listen, I'm a very excitable person. Where does he get off to call me a public avenger and a sadist and everything? He's just trying to bait me. He did an excellent job. Excuse me. Okay, maybe he did. Listen, I, I told you, 
I get moved by this. I'm a certain type of person. But let me tell you, I'm sincere. Fine, we all are. <laughs> well, isn't this the goddamnest thing you ever saw? Six to six, I mean, it's a joke. Well, what can we do about it? Can't we break it somehow? <laughs> Those six bastards in there aren't gonna change their minds? Five of them already have changed their minds. There's no reason why they can't be persuaded to do it again. How? Just by using logic. <laughs> logic? <laughs> well, Holy no, 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 just you listen to this man. He's the only one who knows You are my opinion. Go ahead. I think we should just quit. What the hell are you talking about? Those people in there are suddenly like it's some kind of a mission or something. Look, they're not gonna switch, so let's go and tell the judge or we'll be here all night. I mean, for Christ's sakes, let's tell them we're hung. I mean, I mean, to hell with this. What am I gonna do, break my brains over some scum like that? That's the most ridiculous thing I ever. You took an oath in the courtroom. You can't just quit. <clears throat> Why not? It's dishonest. Why don't you just vote not guilty? Well, I voted guilty because I think he's guilty. But now you don't care what happens. <laughs> no, I should All right, let's stop this. Oh. We're not going to get anywhere like what this. What does he want? I gave my honest opinion. I know. Suppose you don't think much of it? No, I don't. <laughs> well, we'd like to get going in here again, if you don't mind. How about him? Is that something? A hung jury doesn't mean anything. They'll just have to start the trial all over again. That's not what we're here for. Well, what the hell's the difference? A hung jury is what you're gonna get. Look, would you please? <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you what I think. We're going nowhere here. I'm ready to walk into court right now and declare a hung jury. I'd go for that too. Yeah. Let this kid take his chances with 12 other guys. I don't think the court would accept a hung jury. We haven't been in here very long. Well, let's find out. I'm not in favor of this. Look, the kid's guilty and you know it. He wouldn't stand another chance with another jury and you know it too. You don't Come on, we're hung. Let's take it into the judge. You don't think, you don't think there's any room for reasonable doubt? No, I don't. Pardon, perhaps you don't fully understand the term reasonable doubt. What do you mean I don't understand it? Who are you to tell me what words I understand and what words I don't? How'd you like this guy? Comes to this country running for his life, next thing you know, he acts like he knows how to run the show. The arrogance of this guy. Hey, you mean you're calling him arrogant because he wasn't born here? Well, I'm calling you arrogant because you were. How's that? Please, it doesn't listen, matter. Listen, Sonny, nobody's gonna tell me what words I understand and what words I don't. Especially him! Because if he does, I'll knock his goddamn Middle European head off. All right, let's stop arguing for two minutes in here. Can't we stick to the subject? There was, there was something I wanted to go over for a bit, if you, if you <coughs> gentlemen don't mind. An important point for the prosecution was the fact that the boy, after claiming he was at the movies the hours the killing took place, couldn't name the pictures he saw or the, the stars who appeared in them. This is a point that this gentleman has repeated in here several times. That's correct. It was the only alibi the boy offered, and he himself couldn't back it up with any details at all. Putting yourself in the boy's shoes, if you can, do you think you'd be able to remember details after an upsetting experience, such as being struck in the face by your father? I do, if there are any special details to remember. The boy could remember the movies at the theater he named because he wasn't there that night. According to police testimony, he was questioned in the kitchen of his apartment well, the body of his father was, was lying dead in the bedroom. Do you think you'd be able to remember details under such circumstances? I do. Under great emotional stress? Under great emotional stress. You remember the movies in court? He named what he saw and named the actors who played in them. Yes, his lawyer took great pains to bring that out. He had three months from the night of the murder to the day of the trial to, to in which to memorize them. I'll take the testimony to the policeman who interrogated him right after the killing where he couldn't remember a thing about the movies, great emotional stress or not. Could I ask you a personal question? Go ahead. Where were you last night? I was home. And the night before that? <laughs> Come on, what is this? It's perfectly all right. I went from court to my office, and I stayed there till 8.30, then I went straight home to bed. And the night before that? That was Tuesday. I was, uh, that was during the bridge tournament. I played bridge. And Monday night? When you get him to New Year's Eve, 1950. Wake me up. Monday, uh, Monday night. Monday night, Ref and I went to the movies. Oh. What did you see? The Scarlet Circle. It's a very clever whodunit. And what was the second feature? The, I'll tell you a minute, the, uh, the Remarkable Mrs. Something, Mrs. Uh, Mainbridge? No, Bainbridge. The Remarkable Mrs. Bainbridge. Excuse me, I saw that film? It's The Amazing Mrs. Bainbridge. The Amazing Mrs. Bainbridge, yes, I think that's right. And who was in The Amazing Mrs. Bainbridge? Barbara Long, I think. She's a dark, very pretty girl. Barbara Lang, Lane, something like that. Who else? Uh, well, I've never heard of them before. It was a very inexpensive second feature with- And you weren't uh, under an emotional strain, were you? No, 
I wasn't. I think the point is made. Big point. I think it is a big point. What, just because he can't remember the name of some two-bit movie star? I suppose that proves the kid was at the movie. No, but it indicates that no one can prove that he wasn't. I mean, if it's perfectly normal for this gentleman to forget a few details, then it's perfectly normal for the boy. Being accused of murder is not supposed to give him an infallible memory. Listen, you could talk to your tongue is dragging on the floor. This boy is guilty, period. Know what I mean, my friend? Now, who's got those cough drops? They're all gone, my friend. You know, there's something we're forgetting here that I was just thinking about. That whole business with the psychiatrist that Oh, no, don't you start with all that phony psycho whatever you're calling stuff. <laughs> what a racket that is, filling people's heads with that junk. Listen, I got three psychiatrists keeping their cars in one of my garages. The whole three of them are crazy. Well, if there's a point I'm trying to make you do mine. Nah, because I wouldn't give you a nickel for a psychiatrist's testimony. Why don't you let the man talk? You can take five minutes on the uselessness of psychiatry when he's finished. Thank you. What I was going to say was, the psychiatrist definitely stated that the boy had strong homicidal tendencies. I mean, it, it was what he called. Capable of committing murder. He described all those tests, think plots, all that stuff. He said the boy is definitely a killer type. Am I right? Check. And I believe they mentioned something about paranoid tendencies, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Right. Whatever that is, he said it. Let's remember, we're talking about a boy who always had murder on his mind. His unconscious mind. Nobody else's. Uh, I beg pardon. In discussion. I beg pardon. What are you so goddamn polite about? For the same reason you're not. It was the way I was brought up. In discussing such a thing as the murder potential, we should remember that many of us are capable of committing murder, yet few of us do. We impose controls upon ourselves to prevent it. The most the psychiatric test can tell us is this. Someday, a particular person may commit a murder. That is all. They prove nothing. Then how come you're admitted in evidence? They have many uses, of course. In this case, they added to the general impression the prosecution was trying to create. Perhaps we would find that if we 12 men took those same tests, one or two of us might be found to have unconscious desires to kill, and the potentiality of doing so, yet none of us has. To say that a man is capable of committing murder does not mean that he has committed murder. But it can mean it. Listen, if they said this kid was capable of killing, he could have killed, couldn't he? Weren't you the one who said, and I quote, I want to give you a nickel for a psychiatrist's testimony? <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, I'd like to- What time is it? It's kind of six. Man, look at that rain, huh? There goes your ball game. Excuse me, can I see that knife for a second? Oops, we're still tied up six to six here. Who's got a suggestion? I have. Let's get some dinner. Mm, why don't we wait till seven? Just give it another hour. That's okay with me. Uh, excuse me, there's something I'd like to say, and as long as we're stuck, it's about the stab wound, you know, the downward angle of it. Oh, don't tell me we're going to start with that. They went over it and over it. I know they did, but I don't go along with it. The boy's five foot seven, and his father is six foot two. That's a difference of uh, seven inches. It's a very awkward thing to stab downward into the chest of someone who's over half a foot taller than you are. Give me that. <laughs> Look, you're not going to be satisfied till you see it again. I'm going to give you a demonstration. Somebody get up. All right, now pay attention. I don't want to have to do this again. Uh, I'm six or seven inches shorter than you now. That's right. Maybe a little more. Let it be more. Whoa! Whoa! Easy. Oh. Come on. Nobody's hurt, right? No. Nobody's hurt. All right, there's your angle. Down and in. That's how I would stab a taller man in the chest, and that's how it was done. Go ahead and tell me I'm wrong. No argument. Wait a minute. Give me that. I hate these things. I grew up with them. Have you seen them used in fights? Jeez. Too many of them. On my stoop, in my backyard, in the lot across the street. Switch knives just came to the neighborhood I grew up in. Funny. You know, I wasn't thinking of it. I guess you try to forget those things. But you don't hold this type of knife that way. In order to stab downward, you have to change your grip. How do you use it? Underhanded. Like that. Anyone who's ever used a switch knife never handled it any other way. Are you sure? I'm sure. 
I mean, that's why they're made like this. Everyone agreed the boy is pretty handy with a knife, didn't they? That's right. Do you, do you think he would have made the kind of wound that killed his father? No. Not with the experience he had with these things. He'd go from underhanded. Um, how do you know? What, were you in the room when the father was killed? No, and neither was anyone else. Giving us a lot of mumbo jumbo here, I don't believe it. I don't think you can determine the type of wound this boy might or might not have made simply because he knows how to handle the knife. That's right. What do you think? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. What about, what about you? Just a minute. According to a woman across the street. All right, look. She... All this talking is getting us nowhere. I'm getting a little tired of it, so I'll change it up. I vote not guilty. You what? You heard me. I've had enough. What do you mean you've had enough? That's no answer. Listen, buddy, why don't you just worry about yourself? No, he's right. That is not an answer. What kind of man are you? You sat here and voted guilty with everyone else because there are some baseball tickets burning a hole in your pocket, and now you've changed your vote because you say you're sick of all the talking here? Now you listen. have no right to play like this with a man's life. This is a terrible and ugly thing to do. Don't you care? Now you have no right to talk I, to me like I that. I do have a right to talk to you like that. If you want to vote not guilty, then do it because you're convinced the boy is not guilty, not because you've had enough. And if you think he's guilty, then vote that way. But don't you have the guts to do what you think is right? Now look! Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty! Why? God damn you! I don't have to You have to my... say it! Why? I don't think he's guilty. I'd like to call for another vote. All right, there's another vote called for. I guess the quickest way is a show of hands. Anybody object? All right. All those in favor of not guilty, raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All those in favor of guilty? What is nine to three in favor of not guilty? I don't understand you people. I mean, all these picky little points that you keep bringing up, they don't mean nothing. How could you believe his story? You're an intelligent man. Well, you're not gonna tell me or not you know the facts of life. I mean, for Christ's sakes, look at what we're dealing with here. You know what they're like. I mean, that guy over there, well, I don't know what the hell is going on with him. All that talk about psychiatrists. Maybe he ought to go to one. Look, let's talk facts. These people are born to lie. Now, it's the way they are, and no intelligent man is gonna tell me otherwise. I mean, they don't know what the truth is. I mean, just take a look at them. They're, they're different. They think different. They act different. Uh, well, for instance, they don't need any big excuse to go out and kill someone. Uh, well, it's true. A everyone knows it. They, they, they get drunk on uh, wine or, or something cheap like that. Oh, oh they're, they're very big drinkers. <laughs> yeah. Where are you... Where are you going? Smart guy, what the hell does that mean? For Christ's sake, slamming the door. And then they're drunk, and then bang, somebody's lying there in the gutter. Okay, nobody's blaming them for it. That's how they are, by, by nature. Know what I mean? I mean, violence. Human life don't mean as much to them as it does to us. I mean, it's true. They just, they just don't care. It, father, family don't mean nothing to them. Fathers, mothers, that, that don't mean nothing. Oh, sure, there, there are some good things to like about them. Look, look, look I'm the first guy to say that. I, I've known some who are okay, but, but, but that's the exception. You know you're a sick man. Sick? Why don't you just sit down? You old son of a bitch! Who the hell are you? No, no! Who the hell is he to talk to me like that? Sick! Look at him! He can hardly stand up! Look, look! I'm speaking my piece here, and you're all gonna- Maybe if you just quiet it down! No, I will like hell! Quiet down! There is not one of them, not one, who's any good! Now, did you hear that? Now, let me lay this out for you ignorant bastards! You, at the window, you're so goddamn smart! We're facing that danger here, don't you know it? These people are multiplying. Uh, that boy on trial, his type, they're multiplying five times as fast as we are. Uh, five times, that's the statistic. A and they are wild animals. I mean, I, I mean they hate us, uh, they're against us, and, and they want to destroy us. Yeah, that's right, no, don't you look at me like that. There's a danger here. For God's sakes, we're living in a dangerous time, and we don't watch it. I mean, we'll smack them down whenever we can, and they're gonna own us. 
I, they're gonna breathe us out of existence. Ah, oh, shut up! You goddamn geniuses had better listen to me. Uh, they're violent, they're vicious, they're ignorant, and they will cut us up. I mean, that's their intent, to cut us up. I, I'm warning you, man, this, this, this boy uh, on trial here, uh, we've got him. And that's the one, at least. I, I say we get him before his kind gets us. Now, I, I don't give a goddamn about the law. I, I mean, why should I? They certainly don't. And I'm telling now you, you just stop all of this. How would you like me to cave in your head for you, you smart little bastard? Where the hell do you get the gold? We've gold heard enough. Sit down and don't open your filthy mouth again. It's very hard to keep your personal prejudice out of a thing like this, and no matter where you run into it, prejudice obscures the truth. Well, I don't think any real damage has been done here, because I don't know the truth. None of us ever will, I suppose. Nine of us now seem to feel that the defendant is innocent, but we're just gambling on probabilities. We may be wrong. We may be trying to return a guilty man to the community, but we have a reasonable doubt. And that is a safeguard that has enormous value within our system. No jury can declare a man guilty unless it's sure. We nine can't seem to understand how you three are, are still so sure. Maybe you can tell us. I'll try. You've made some excellent points. The last one in which you argued that the boy wouldn't have made the kind of overhand stab wound that killed his father was very persuasive. But I still believe the boy is guilty of murder. I have two reasons. One. The evidence given by the woman across the street who actually saw the murder committed. And how, brother? As far as I'm concerned, that's the most important testimony in the whole case. And two, the fact that this woman described the stabbing by saying she saw the boy raise his arm over his head and plunge the knife down to his father's chest. She saw him do it the wrong way. Uh, that, that's right, he's right. Now let's talk about this one for a minute. She said that she went to bed at about 11 o'clock that night, but she, she wasn't able to sleep. She tossed and turned for over an hour and able to fall asleep. Her bed was next to the window, and she could look out while lying down and see directly into the boy's window across the tracks. Then she looked toward the window, and as she looked out, she saw the killing through the windows of the passing out train. She said the lights went immediately after the killing, but that she got a good look at the boy in the act of stabbing his father. As far as I can see, this is unshakable testimony. That's what I mean. That's the whole case. What do you think? How about you? Well, I don't know. There's so much evidence to sift. I mean, this is a pretty complicated business. Frankly, I don't think we can vote for acquittal. Well, it's, it's not so easy to arrange the evidence in order. All right, look, you can forget all the other evidence. The woman saw him do it. What else do you need? Well, maybe. I'd have to call for another vote. OK, there's another vote called for. Anybody object? I'm changing my vote. I think the boy is guilty. <laughs> Anybody else? Vote is 8 to 4. What makes you consider this one vote a personal triumph? I'm the competitive type. All right, look. Here's what I think. Think we're a hung jury. Let's take it inside to the judge. You didn't want a hung jury before. I want it now. I didn't understand that. You thought it was immoral. I don't anymore. There are some people in here who are so goddamn stubborn. We'll never get through this thing. We'll be here for a week. Come on, I want to hear arguments. I say we're a hung jury. You're the leader of this thing. What about it? Let's go over it again. Oh, we went over it again. J. Walter Thompson over here is bouncing backwards and forwards like a tennis ball. Now, wait a minute. You have no oh, right. I apologize on my knees. Let's get out from under this thing. All right. Maybe we can talk about setting some kind of a time limit. The time is quarter after six. Quarter after six. Someone before mentioned 7 o'clock. I think that's the point at which we might begin to discuss the question of whether we're a hung jury or not. Don't you feel well? I feel perfectly well, thank you. I was saying that 7 o'clock would be... It's just that you were rubbing... I'm sorry for interrupting you, but you made I'm a I'm trying to settle something here. Do you mind? I think it's important. Very well. Now, I was, 
I'm sure you'll pardon me for interrupting, but I was just wondering why you were rubbing your nose like that. Oh, come on, will you please? Right now I happen to be talking to this gentleman. Now, why were you rubbing your nose? Well, if it's any of your business, I was rubbing it because it bothers me a little. I'm sorry, is it because of your eyeglasses? It is. Now, could we get on to something else? Your eyeglasses make these deep impressions on the sides of your nose. I hadn't noticed that before. They must be very annoying. They are very annoying. I wouldn't know anything about that. I've never worn eyeglasses. 2020. <laughs> All right, listen. Would you hurry up with the optometrist bit? The woman who testified in court that she saw the killing had those same deep marks on the sides of her nose. That's right, right she did. That's right. Yeah. 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 Now, there. please, please, just a moment, and then I'll be finished. Now, I don't know if any of you noticed it. I didn't notice it before, but now I can't stop thinking about it. She had those same deep marks on the sides of her nose, and she kept rubbing them in court. Yeah, she had those marks. I saw them. Now, this woman was about 45 years old, and she was making a tremendous effort to look 35 for her first public appearance. Heavy makeup, dyed hair, clothes that should have been worn by a much younger woman. But no eyeglasses. See if you can get a mental picture of her. What? No eyeglasses? You don't know if she wore glasses? Just because she was rubbing her nose like that, I mean... Look, I saw him. She kept rubbing him in court. What does that mean? No, he's right. I saw him too. I was the closest one to her. She had these deep things. What do you call them? Uh, you know. What does that prove? She had those marks. She had dyed hair and marks on her nose. I'm asking you, what does that prove? <laughs> could those marks be made by anything other than eyeglasses? No, they couldn't. Then what are you guys talking about? I didn't see any marks. I did. Strange, right? I didn't think about it before. What about the lawyer? Why didn't he bring it up? Well, there are 12 of us in here focusing on this case, and 11 of us didn't think of it either. Okay, Clarence Darrow. What about the district attorney? You think he'd pull a trick like that? Have her testify without glasses? Have you ever seen a woman who, who had to wear glasses but didn't want to because she thought they'd spoil her looks? My wife! Listen, I'm telling you! As maybe soon as the district attorney didn't know either. Uh, y yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Okay. She had marks on her nose. From eyeglasses, right? She didn't wear them out of the house so that people would think she was freaking gorgeous! But when she saw this boy kill his father, she was in the house, alone. Do you wear eyeglasses when you go to sleep? No, no one wears eyeglasses to sleep. It's safe to assume the woman wasn't wearing them when she was tossing and turning, trying to fall asleep. How do you know? I don't know. I'm guessing. I'm also guessing that when she turned and looked casually out the window, she didn't put on her glasses. And she herself said that the lights went out a, a split second later, so she couldn't have time to put on the glasses then. Wait, wait a minute. And here's another guess. Maybe the woman honestly thought she saw the boy kill his father. I say she only saw a blur. How do you know this? How does he know these things? I, you don't know what kind of glasses she wore. Maybe they were sunglasses. Maybe she was farsighted. What do you know about it? I only know that the woman's eyesight is in question now. She had to identify someone 60 feet away in the dark without glasses. You can't send someone off to die at evidence like that. Don't give me that. Don't you think the woman might have made a mistake? No. It's not possible. No, it's not possible. Is it possible? It's possible. I think the boy's not guilty. Do you still think he's guilty? Yes, I still think he's guilty. But I could care less. You smart bastard, just do whatever you want. How do you vote? Not guilty. Do whatever the hell you want. You're the worst son of a... I still think he's guilty. Does anyone else still think he's guilty? No, I'm convinced. The hell's the matter with you? I now have reasonable doubt. The vote's 11 to 1. What about all the, uh, the other, other evidence? The, the knife, the whole business? You said we could throw out all the other evidence. You're alone. I don't care if I'm alone. It's my right. It's your right. Well, what do you want? I say he's guilty. We want your arguments. I gave you my arguments. We want to hear them again. We're not convinced. We have as much time as it takes. Everything, every single thing that came out of that courtroom says this kid is guilty. You think I'm an idiot or something? You lousy bunch of bleeding hearts! You're not gonna intimidate me! I could sit in this goddamn room for a year! Well, come on, somebody say something! Why don't you take the whole, the whole thing with the old man who heard everything? Or, or, or the knife, just because he found one like it. I mean, the old man saw him 
right there on the stairs. What's the difference how many seconds it took? I mean, what's the difference? Every single thing. The knife falling through a hole in the boy's pocket. I mean, every single thing. I mean, I mean, you can't prove the old man didn't get the door. Sure, you can hobble around the room all you want. You can't prove it. Every single thing brought up in that courtroom has been twisted and turned in here. I mean, the old woman, how do you know she wore glasses? I mean, she testified in court. That's it. That is the whole case. The whole business about hearing the boy yell. The phrase was, I'm gonna kill you. That's what he said to his own father. I don't care what kind of man that was. That was his father. I mean, what a rotten kid. I know his type, what they're like, how they kill you every day. I see. How come I'm the only one who sees? God, I can feel the knife going in. He's not your boy. He's somebody else. All right. Not guilty. We have a verdict. All right. Gentlemen, come take your seats in the jury box. and the work she puts in is amazing. Um, so we'd like to present this to her. Thank you. As some may know, um, this is Miss Nelia's last play. Uh, how many years now? Too many.
many. Too many. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we've all agreed that this has probably one of been one of the hardest practice periods we've had uh, just with the, with the pandemic and everything that's gone on. Um, I'm, I'm surprised the flowers even came because knowing how <laughs> this thing went, we would have been delayed too. So um, we just want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts, Miss Nelia. Thank you for, for everything, for all the hard work you've put in, for, for dealing with us for seven months. And um, I, this has just been uh, the time of my life and we want to thank you for that dearly. Thank you. I, uh, do you know these guys? Let me kind of bring up here. There are a few people I, I do need to thank too. And um, I want to start with the guys who have been um, wonderful about setting up and uh, streaming so much of what goes on here at the prep, especially during these times where we've been so distanced from each other. So thank you to Dave Snyder and the men of STEM. Uh, I know that that includes Gabe, Paolo, Justin, Owen, Chris, Aiden, and Zach. I'm not exactly sure how many of you are up there today, but thank you guys so much and big thanks to Dave Snyder. Uh, I want to thank uh, um, our technical director, Brian Sosa, from the class of 10. And I would like to thank uh, our, the man who just runs sound for us here and ha has been a lifesaver for us over the years, and that's Mr. Kevin Leone. And especially since this year we were sort of on again, off again, we're going to be outside, we're going to be inside, we'll be at the CAC, we'll be down in the parking lot, we'll be in the auditorium. And they, they just took everything in stride and really helped us to pull this whole thing off. And special thanks on sound to our senior, uh, Alex Boris. I have to keep thinking of your, your last name, Alex, sorry. And, um, so, so much thanks and gratitude to you, Alex, for everything you've done for us uh, in running the sound for the production. Uh, he came in yesterday for the first time to do a run through on a system that's in need of upgrade and, uh, <laughs> and did an admirable job on it. So thank you very much. <laughs> Super special thanks to our director of activities, Pete Durning, because I don't know how we would have done this without his constant support and care for the arts here at Seton Hall Prep. So big thank you to Pete Durning. I know he's home watching the baby. Uh, I would just like to ask our seniors to step forward, if you can. Um, eight of the 13 guys in this production were also in our last drama production, A Christmas Carol, back in December of, of 19. And uh, so our seniors here, I have you listed so I don't forget anybody, uh, Matt Barty, David Ako, Greg Dort, Connor Gorman, Will Kennedy, Joaquin Surial, and Nathaniel Marty Tabora. So thank you, seniors, in a special way for everything you've done, okay? And since we don't have programs, I also do want to make mention of uh, the rest of our cast members who hopefully will be leading the way next year with the next drama production, and that's uh, Justin Abbott, Anthony Patino, Chris Duff, Ben Ferrara, Ian Miller, and Lou Scafidi. Thank you, guys. Okay. You're up. Kelly and I were able to say a few words on every half. Absolutely. Uh, again, the three thank yous. We got word at home that it was a phenomenal performance, live stream. People appreciate it, so thank you guys for the work. Um, our motto, Hazards at Fours, I don't know how you guys kept doing it. Congratulations. I'm proud of you guys, what you did. And when, when I can't say enough about Mrs. Nelia, uh, time, talent, and treasure. If you think about how much time that she's put into this place with her heart and soul for over the years, uh, tremendous talent. She's probably the most talented person in this building. It's going to take more than one person, at least two people, to fill her position for doing that. And, and the treasure is just the countless students 
that because of her time and talent, you're able to do what she's there. So thank you very much. And since thanks to the uh, parents for uh, sending these songs to us, posting them uh, to us, we appreciate the sacrifice you make so that your songs can be be with us. So many, many thanks uh, to the young people coming to us. Thank you. And since since I am the only woman up here, I get the last word. Uh, and I would like to uh, reiterate and reinforce what just has been said. We are family. Thank you to my Nelia family, and thank you to my Reynolds family, and thank you to my Seton Hall Prep family. Sweetheart. Have a great day. <laughs>